Fan Art, be happy to be new here. My name is Jess. Today I'm going to be filming the Reader Problem book tag. Reader's Problems? Reader Problems? You know what I'm saying. Um, I've seen this floating around for a while, um, but somebody I actually subscribed to just recently posted it and I was like, those questions are actually really cool. And we all know I'm a fan of tags. I know that tags are sort of dead on other sides of YouTube, but I think they're well and alive on Bookstagram. Anybody who says they're dying is so full of crap. They're not dying. They're so much fun to film because I feel like books, Bookstagram, because I feel like Booktube is a more personal side of YouTube. So I feel like we enjoy tags so much more because you get to learn so much more about the people that you are close to because I feel like we do have a closer connection to our subscribers, so I think it's really fun to do. With all of that said, let's go ahead and get started because there are quite a few questions on here and I'm really excited to answer them. So question number one is you have 20,000 books on your TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? Um, a lot of what I read is based on, like I have the group Hypernaut, which is always listed in my description bar. Um, so I do read a book every month based on that. I also like to buddy read with people, so a lot of my books are influenced by buddy reads. But when it comes to books I just read in my own spare time, I will go through my shelves and I will see a book that I have not read and go, okay, do I want to read that book this month? Am I in the mood for it? Because I am not just a mood reader, but also a mood buyer. I have read most of the books that I own. Um, so I don't really have that problem. I tend to read books as I get them. But if I have a book that I've had for a while, it really is just based on whether or not I'm in the mood to read it, if somebody I know is in the mood to read it, anything like that. So for me, it's really just depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, some months I will go a whole month with only reading one or two books, and I don't beat myself up about that. That's more than some people get to read, more than some people have the luxury of reading, so I'm really thankful for that. So if I'm in the mood to read 100 books, it just depends on my mood. If I don't want to read it all, I just don't read. Question number two, you're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? Um, back in the day I would say that I would never quit. I'm always committed to reading books. However, this month, which I will kind of show you a little bit more in my wrap up, I did start and actually DNF three different books because I just don't have the time anymore. I don't know if I would be this way if I didn't do booktube, if I didn't do bookstagram, you know, if I wasn't giving like honest reviews on something because before when I would read a book it would just be for my enjoyment and if I didn't like it, whatever, at least I can say that I finished the book. But when I'm giving knowledge to somebody else, so I'm giving somebody else my opinion on a book, if I dnf a book, I want people to know that I disliked a book so much that I stopped reading it because I think that's very important. I gain a lot of the books that I want to read based on other people's opinions. Obviously I am my own person and I do make my own conclusions based on whether or not I enjoyed a book, but if I'm reading a book and I don't like it these days, I'll just DNF it, but this is a more recent thing. This has been something that I've kind of started doing in the last four to five months. Question number three is the end of the year is coming and you're so close but so far away on your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? I, I feel like if I was really far away, I probably wouldn't. I have surpassed my goal this year. Um, I always set goals that are a little bit more manageable for me just because, like I said, sometimes I will go a month without reading, sometimes I will read like, I think one month this year I read like 16 books, but that's not average for me, so I will try to read I usually try to set it at about three to four books a month and that's totally doable for me. I think that it's just, it depends on what kind of TBR goal you've set. If you have set one that is so ridiculous, like you have this really, really strong goal of reading like 150 books a year and you tend to only read like one or two books a month, I think that's a little unrealistic. So for me, uh, I feel like if I was behind on my goal, one, I wouldn't beat myself up. Who cares? It's not really like something that dictates your value or worth it, whether or not you're able to read, you know, all the books that you set to read. I think honestly, it just depends. And a lot happens to us in a year as well. Some, you know, major life changes, moving, um, anything that negatively impacts your life that makes it hard to read, work, uh, school, anything like that. I think all of that needs to be taken into account. So I don't think that if I was behind that I would rush to try to finish it. Question number four, the covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? Uh, I cry. Um, my husband and I were actually unpacking his books last night and I noticed that some of them, like the fourth book was hardcover or the first book was hardcover and all the books were different sizes and oh my god, he was like, I know this kills you, but look at this shelf. And I was like, no, can't look at it, can't look at it. I hate that. It is probably my least favorite thing. I need my books to match. Um, since I've kind of arranged them by color, it's not such a big deal, but most of the books that I have do match because I am so anal retentive about that. I just, I need them to match. I'm really sorry. I don't know if it's the OCD in me or what, but if they don't match, I don't want them. Question number five is everyone and their mother loves a book you really don't like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? Um, I have three friends that really come to mind. My friends Sid, Sam, and Joe. All of us kind of talk about books that, you know, other people really liked and not in a negative way by any means because as much as you're talking about books that you love, there's somebody somewhere on the internet that's talking about a book that you love in a negative way and not necessarily directed at you and why you love that book and that we don't, but just the things that we didn't like about it. Because think about it, when you read a book that you really love, you sit 
sit down and you talk with your friends about the things that you really loved. Well, we're doing that with books that you don't like. Everybody does it. I'm sorry. Question number six. You're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you deal? I don't deal. I cry in public. Question number seven. A sequel of a book you love just came out, but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. Will you reread the book, skip the sequel, try to find a synopsis on Goodreads, or cry in frustration? I'm one of those people that tends to remember things from books for a, quite a while, so I feel like if I, depending on how long it had been, I may read a synopsis from the first one, I may watch a video on booktube if somebody has done a review on it, it just kind of depends, read something on Goodreads, something like that, but usually what I will do is I'll, I'll just go into the next book, because what tends to happen in books is they kind of backtrack a little bit into the book that you read before, um, and even if not, as you're reading, things will start to come to mind, so to me, it doesn't it doesn't really bug me if I don't remember a book 100%. I can't say I've ever reread something to prepare for the next book. Question number eight, you do not want anyone anyone borrowing your books. How do you politely tell people nope when they ask? I don't politely tell anyone that uh, they're not going to borrow my books. I just simply say I don't let people borrow my books because, okay, look, you buy something expensive because books are fucking expensive. You buy something expensive and somebody takes it and they borrow it and they ruin it. Would you give somebody your phone to borrow? Would you buy a nice collectible and then let them borrow it for whatever reason? No, you wouldn't. And that's sort of how I feel about my books. I have two people in my entire life that I will let borrow books. Um, they're really, really good friends of mine. I know where they live if they ever don't return them. That's a big thing for me. Um, but they love and care for books as much as I do. So if you are not somebody that I find can care for a book and treat a book as the collectible that it is, I'm not gonna let you borrow my book. And I won't be a jerk about it, but I'm really just gonna be like, hey, I've seen how you treat your books and there's not a chance in hell. I actually bought a book for a girl. She asked if she could borrow one of my books and I told her yes and then immediately regretted it and just went and bought her the book instead. Uh, question number nine, reading ADD, you picked up and put down five books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? I just simply take a break. When something like that happens, I will play video games, I will watch TV shows, I will do whatever I need to do for the month just to get out of the reading slump. I never try to push myself through them. Um, I know people do different things, but that's just what works for me. If I'm not feeling like reading, I don't force myself to read because I feel like it just makes my slump so much worse and it makes the books that I read after that seem like less than they actually are. Question number 10, there are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? All of them. I will literally buy every single book that comes out if I really wanted to read it. Now that doesn't often happen, um, but there have been a couple of months this past year that a bunch of books came out all at once and I bought every single one of them. I will set aside money if I need to. Um, I've been kind of getting better about knowing when books are going to release, so that I'm kind of on the up and up about that, but if I see a book and I like it or I know a book's coming out, I'll just buy it. And the last question, number 11, after you bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? Not long, actually. I'm one of those people who tends to read books as they come out, as I, well not as they come out, but as I pick them up. Like I said, I've read most of the books on my shelves, so the ones that I have read were gifts or were from really big hauls, but if I buy a book singularly, like I see a book somewhere and I'm like, I really want to read that book, I will just read that book. I'm not one of those people that hoards books and never reads them. Alright guys, so that is it for today's video. I don't know where this tag originated from. If you do, please, please, please leave in the comments down below so that I can go ahead and list their video in my description bar. Like I said, I've just seen this floating around and I'm not the best at tracking down like original versions of tags and things like that and I do want to give credit where credit is due. So if you know who did this, please let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys are having a good week and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!